Chuck talk number two and another difficult loss, this one to the Green Bay Packers. And not quite a fourth and one call, the defining play that you had week number one where even Mama Lynch weighed in. But, but to me, the play of the game in Green Bay, and, and some of this is just the QB-centric nature and analysis, but this is a play that Russell Wilson can hit. This is a third and ten, if you remember, right at the end of the third quarter, the Seahawks are up 17-16. Green Bay is not stopping them. On the previous two drives, the Seahawks threw it 13 of 16 plays and went right down the field on back-to-back -back touchdowns. This is right near midfield right at the end of the third quarter, albeit third and 10, not an easy conversion rate by any chance in percentages, but unfortunately, you get what you want if you're the Seahawks and you don't make Green Bay pay. Players, formations, plays. You know on third down, 89 is one of the best in the game. Some of his peers that have played with him say nobody gets a better release off the ball than 89. They're going to put him up on the line of scrimmage, and he doesn't even have to work his magic off the ball. They're giving him a bit of a cushion. So players, put Doug Baldwin in the third and down in a position for success. Formations. They get into empty. Empty, some problems against St. Louis because of so much penetration. Empty versus Green Bay, a little bit more success because these five gave Russell, especially in that second half, some real room and some real area to breathe, to function, and to move. Players on third down, get Doug Baldwin involved. Formation on third down, get yourself into an empty set where you start to spread them out and where you have been so good in that second half, giving Russell time to throw. And then lastly, play. And this is probably what's most discouraging about this play because you don't get it and you can't get it any better for 89-3 and three than what Green Bay gives you. It is a chess match. It's Daryl Bevel and Tom Cable trying to decide through protections and plays what's going to hit versus what that defense is going to do. And Green Bay decides to go dime package. Two wide threes. You're going to keep Jimmy Graham in and Jimmy pass blocks magnificently. Your guard tackle combination handle there. Your two guards handle there. Russell here. There is no Nobody within five yards of Russell Wilson now comes down to coverage and all you're going to do is run people off if you're the Seahawks and the advantage here and the nice thing is Matthew's got eyes on Jimmy Graham and this safety because of Jimmy's influence he doesn't even get to Doug Baldwin he's got his eyes in the backfield as well so now you've got Doug Baldwin and Chris Matthews in a two on three not ideal well you know what is ideal this free safety and this nickelback decide to combo Chris Matthews. And you have all of this. All of this real estate right here. It's Doug Baldwin on a dime back and Russell Wilson on third and ten. You know who should win? Doug Baldwin and Russell Wilson. You know who wins? Doug Baldwin runs right by him. 33 is chasing and you have everywhere on the field to throw it. As I said on my show on Monday, Russell could have punted that to Doug Baldwin. He has separation. He has the dime defender beat. He has the entire field to work because they guess right. There was a combo on Chris Matthews for some reason. I think a mistake by Green Bay. And the Seahawks unfortunately don't capitalize. They hit this play. They go up 24 to 16 going into the fourth quarter in Green Bay. You know what happens to the Packers? It happens to that stadium and happens to the fans? That seed of doubt, that thought that I haven't beat this team. And once again, they're making plays what could have been the third touchdown of the game in the second half. Ends up being an incomplete, a punt, and they never really get a chance to come back.